चक्रहस्तम द्रष्टुम अहम was emanated from the lotus leaves of Lord Krishna in the battlefield of Kurukshetra in Punjab in India approximately 5,000 years ago according to the time tracking system of the western world. According to the time tracking system of eastern process, this event happened many, 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 many thousand years ago. There are 700 verses in Srimad Bhagavad Gita, divided into 18 chapters. The battle of Mahabharata was fought for 18 days, so there are 18 chapters. There are three schools of thoughts in these three chapters, which concludes 700 verses. The first six chapters, from 1 to 6, that, broadly speaking, gives you the insight of Karma Yoga and Sankhya Yoga, a combination. Sankhya means the meditation and yoga. So it's a Karma Yoga, these first six chapters, seven to twelve. That is called Bhakti Yoga, Yoga of Devotion. And thirteen to twenty, that is the jnana yoga, the yoga of knowledge. <coughs> so there are three schools of thought, karma yoga, bhakti yoga, jnana yoga. The yoga of action, the yoga of devotion, the yoga of knowledge. Now, 18 has a very special meaning, mathematically speaking. 8 plus 1 is 9, right? 18 is 9. 8 are the elements of your body. 5 are the gross elements, 3 are the subtle elements. Gross elements, fire, earth, air, water, and sky, ether. There are 3 subtle elements which you cannot see. That is your mind, and ego. And at the top of that, which is one, these are the eight, so the ninth one is your spirit, Atma, which is the integral part of your Almighty. All these eight elements with which our body is made, outer body, they are subject to change. At any given moment, your body is changing. New cells are coming, old cells are dying. This per process is perpetual, never ending. As we grow old, in terms of age, the process is reversed. The young cells are dying more, and the new cells are coming less. That is the definition of old age. So, we must understand and digest this information that our body is made of eight elements. These eight elements are subject to change and that is we say that in spiritual language that this whole phenomenal world in which you live, it is subject to change. It is changing and it will continue to change. Nothing is permanent. Nothing is permanent. The only permanent element in your body is your soul, because that is the integral part of your mind, God. God never changes, so it is the integral part. So people who are attuned to that element, who practice and make it perfect in due course, how to tap the resources of Atma, your spirit, once you get that, then you think.
teaching will be permanent. Then whatever it will do, it has the reflection of permanence. Anything less than that, that relates to your body. In chapter 2nd of Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna tells Arjuna that we are not the bodies, we are living in the bodies. Do you understand this concept? We are not the bodies. Body means the outer frame, the skeleton in which the skin has been wrapped around. We are all skeleton. But this is the skin who is holding this skeleton. So this skeleton, which we call body, which we look into the mirror, which we identify ourselves with, this is me. That you are not. You are not that. So you are not the body, you are living in the body. Living in the body means you are the Atma. You are the spirit. You are the integral part of the Almighty. But we don't accept this. All our resources, throughout our life, we invest on the outer frame. We don't take care of one part, which is the spirit, the language of the God. We don't have the technique and tool available, the awareness, how to tap that resource. And this frame is changing. We were young, there was childhood, then came the youth, then the middle age, and the old age. So this frame is changing. This frame is changing. But our, all of our resources are invested on the outer frame, which is a human tragedy. That you are holding that thing which is changing all the time. So we go to gym, we jog, we swim. It all relates to the outer frame. Does not matter the best swimmer. He become, body becomes frail in due course. He cannot get up from the bed. The best wrestler at the prime time of his wrestling career, he can defeat anybody. But when then the time comes, he ends up in the icy due to the outer frame. So when we are young, when have the resources, energy, the will, the determination. At that point, you should set the racket straight. And repeat to yourself, when you get up in the morning, stand up in front of the mirror and challenge yourself, I am not this. I am not this. I am behind that. So, this awareness that I am not the body, that will mellow down to your ego. Otherwise, we think there is nobody like me. Does not matter. You talk to anybody, deep down he or she thinks that there is nobody like me. And that is a fallacy. We are living in fool's paradise. The Creator created this creation equally. You go to China, they have the same body. You go to Russia, they have the same body. You go to India, they have the same body. Come here, you have the same body. Two eyes, one nose, two ears, one heart, two legs, two hands, two arms, so forth and so on. The body is same. Body is same. So we are same. We are all, all, all populace. They are exactly holding the same constitutional setup of their body. Nobody has two hearts. Nobody has four eyes. Nobody has ten ears. No. It is given. So we are equal in terms of outer frame. But inside we are different. In 
inside they are different. People who are spiritual and who follow their discipline honestly, they are more compassionate. They are more empathetic. They are selfless people. They go and reach out to the society, the community, and try to change them. They do a lot of volunteer work. They don't charge anything from anybody. That is the reflection that they are attuned to a different set of values. But otherwise, if you don't do that, then you are subject to selfishness, I-ness, that it is me, my, my home, my wife, my kids, I earn this money, this is my, all my possessions. We come naked. If you go to the nursery, every child is a naked child. If they are one, if one day old, you go and see the nursery. They all look alike. And they are all naked. And when we depart from this planet, it is the same concept. We are naked. Everything is taken away. And your best friends, your parents, your relatives, your own kids, they become the witness because they took away everything from you. And you are lying there. And they are okay. They think that individual is going. But they will totally forget that one day the same crowd will bring me here also. So, this is the writing on the wall. The writing on the wall. Bhagavad Gita is not a scary thing. Once you know, once you have the knowledge of something, then you become very comfortable. When you are guessing something, if you are guessing life, then you are fearful. Then you are fearful. There was broad based research and the question was, what is the biggest fear people are afraid of in, in the entire world? And the answer came up, death. Death. That was the answer. And the question was, what is the biggest fear? The answer was death. Bhagavad Gita, if you are a serious student of Bhagavad Gita, I am just giving the preview, we will continue. This is the first session, I am giving you the background. Once you are a serious student of Bhagavad Gita, death will be your friend. You will never be scared of this concept of death. There is no such thing as death. In the periscope of Srinath Bhagavad Gita, Death is a change. You just change the old clothes and wear the new one. Vasan Siddhirnani Yathavihai Navani Jhrenati Naro Purani Tatha Sharirani Vihai Jhirna Nanyani Sanjati Navani Dehi Jaisi hum apne kapde badlete hain, aise hum shirir badlete hain. Because you are not the shirir. Darte wo hai jo ye sabhite hain. I am the body. I will die. Body will die, body will decay. It is subject to gravity. There are a lot of external forces working on your body. You may live in every house. You can live in the best, best palace. Your body will become frail. So, once you understand and see the student of Bhagavad Gita, then you will become fearless. Fearless. And ek hota hai fearlessness se jina. Ek hota hai roj marmar ke jina. Roj marmar ke jina means you are fearful. Fearful. So, Bhagavad Gita will bring the awareness in the recess of your mind that is a better way of living. We will continue to live like that.
will meet and greet with people like that. You continue to eat whatever you want to eat. But you, awareness will change. And that will make you fearless. Once you are fearless, what is the litmus test? You are qualitative. Qualitative in your speech, qualitative in your eating habits, qualitative in your speech, in your sleep, in your interaction. When you are working in the office, you will be more qualitative. Your performance will be a par excellent than the others who don't understand this concept. So that will bring the quality in your personality because you are fearless. You are fearless. And once you are fearless, you expand. You are out of the box. Nowadays, in corporate world, the terminology is think out of the box. What does it mean? Bhagavad Gita, thousand years before, brought this concept. Sarve bhavantu sukhina. We say it. Every puja ke baad we say it. Sarve santu naramaya, sarve bhadraani pashyantu makaccha dukbaad me. Goodwill to everybody. Ill will to none. Sab ka prabhu bhala karo. That is the universal thought, global thought. But that language, we have just like a parrot. We are repeating that. But we don't mean anything. Aap apne jo prosi ya usse to pyaar karte nahi, sarve bhant sukhina kaise ho sakta hai. Because they don't understand. I think in going to mandir and saying these words, will bring some benefit to me. No, I am living in fool's paradise. I have to understand the concept. So that is why they say, if you want to grow spiritually, love thy neighbor. For I have no idea. So I have to understand the concept. And then we talk of the word peace. Bhagavad Gita will give you the strength, the moral courage, how to bring peace in the world. But the condition is, first of all, you have to be peaceful. You give to the world only what you have. You cannot borrow. So if you are not peaceful, how can you make the world peaceful? You are the chain. You have to change. Then you can bring the chain. So, what does it mean in spiritual terms? It means that when the head of the household, right? Jabab of the return of the income tax, there are tax status. Individual, head of the household, married, filing jointly, married filing separately, right? Head of the household, we are all head of the house. Is it not your prime ethical duty to bring peace in your home? Who has to take care of that? Either don't call yourself head of the house. If you are the head of the house, Take care of your spouse. See the divinity in her eyes and the vice versa. Hum to ladte, we fight. So once your home is not peaceful, the moment you come out of your home, you are excited, agitated, to whomsoever you will meet, shake hand, you will make them excited. Because this is what you are. So the mantra is, the wisdom of Bhagavad Gita is, bring peace in your home, in your kitchen, in your bedroom, in your living room. Create the qualitative situation of coexistence and respect for diversity. We are diverse. So, 
एक आई थिंक कब प्रवीर फोर एज स्टॉप देखते फिल्म और उसमें एक सॉन्ग था शाहरुख खान था उसमें तुझ में रब दिखता है यारा मैं क्या करूं दिस वॉज द सॉन्ग विच मीन दैट इन योर आई दिस इज वॉट इज सेंग टू हिज बिल दैट इन योर आईज आई सी दिविनिटी मुझे रब दिखाई देता है आई एम सो हेल्पलेस सो आई एम इन लव तो गाना तो हम कहते हैं बड़ा अच्छा है डू वी अप्लाई दैट कॉन्सेप्ट Do you see divinity in in the eyes of your spouse? No. So, what is the problem? We don't get it right. We don't get it. Bhagavad Gita will give you the strength, the technique, the tool, the process, how to do it. And these things are doable. but for first of all your perception has to change when the perception changes everything changes bhagavad gita is the lighthouse it is the gps in your pocket if you advance if you want to advance it spiritually hold the gps in your pocket then you will be fearless you will be selfless you will be dedicated you will be outpouring out of your personality so that is what bhagavad gita does so going back to bhagavad gita there are three schools of thoughts the karma yoga the, the bhakti yoga and jnana yoga what is karma yoga i am just touching the peripheral view then we will continue in the subsequent session what is karma yoga what is karma what is karma i am asking karma is what actions we take okay. what we do the duty no okay. anyway say something Did you have heard this word so what is what do you think what is karma the actions we do okay so on a daily basis we use this word ke sab ko apna karm karna chahiye the duty to do this right This is called ignorance. <laughs> In terms of Bhagavad Gita's vocabulary, this is the language of ignorance. Karma is, जैसे आप सुबह उठते हो, right? You want to go to office, so you go take bath, you shave, you dress up, try to get your best, and now you go to office. That is not a karma. karma is when you interact with people now those people may be wife be or your children be how to communicate how you are doing things with others that will decide the quality of your karma so there are good karmas there are bad karma so first first of all i should know what is good karma and what is bad good karma the golden thread is selflessness give more expect less if you hold this mantra practice it at every step of your daily life give more expect less this is the best karma best karma means in other words it will you will stay peaceful when you give more expect less you are peaceful if you reverse this process give less and expect more you are always excited and agitated when you give more expect less you are positive when you give less and expect more then you are negative and positivity is the litmus test of spirituality how much spiritual you are means how much positive you are are you talking to people and making them motivated uplifting them or are you pulling their legs it is up to you 
we come alone on this planet and we go alone. And whose responsibility is this? to polish my personality? Not yours, not yours, mine. You are responsible for yourself because you are alone. All these, the kingdom of I-ness, we call it, husband, wife, children, my school, my college, my job, my car, we create a network of I-ness. This is the, called the network of I-ness. So people who create a network of I-ness, they suffer more. Fundamentally, you sh nothing belongs to you. You are the custodian. Become the trustee. Use it, but don't hold it. Think always, this is not mine. It is the golden opportunity God has given to me. All wealth, all health, all thinking belongs to Him. To so give the credit where it belongs to. So, this is how Bhagavad Gita will revolutionize your thinking. You will start thinking differently. You will be very positive, very positive. Once you are positive, you are very productive, as I said before. You are very qualitative. And the mission of life, why we are here, according to the wisdom of Bhagavad Gita, is to create this creation more beautiful with your contribution. That is what Bhagavad Gita is. It is a fragrance of your personality. People will love you because your language is different. Your soul is different. Your soul is inclusive. Nowadays, there are a lot of federal laws for the diversity. Because this country is a melting pot. There are every nation in the world, 192 countries. One person is there out of those countries. So it is a melting pot. So there are federal laws of discrimination. What does it mean? Don't dislike people from their color, creed, sex, height, weight. No. Language, what they speak, no. Dress, how they dress up, no. The law is respect the diversity. Respect the diversity. Respect the diversity means Joab Mandir Vikatyo, Survey Bhavan Susukhi. That is what it means. So, once the perception changes, your thinking changes. You start thinking differently. It is free. You don't have to pay anything anybody. It is just the realignment. Changing the oil in your personality. Wheel alignment of your thinking. All those concepts which are relating to the car, relating to your body. But this is the vehicle. It is just a vehicle. Just we car change car, it will change like And my journey will continue. So think bigger thing, not small thing. And the wisdom of Bhagavad Gita gives you another very strong tool that don't gossip, don't damage people. Don't damage people through your speech, through your thinking, and physical. That is why the golden rule of whole spirituality is non-violence. Non-violence. This is called non-violence, not violence to yourself. How? What is the violence to myself? eating garbage, eating these fast foods. This is your body, the temple. In chapter 15th of Srimad Bhagavad Gita, there is a verse, 
सर्वस्य चाहम हरिदिसन्निविष्टो मत्ता समृति ज्ञानम पोहनम वेदे च सर्वे रहमेव वेदियो वेदांत कृदे अविदेव चाहम आई एम सिटिंग इन योर हार्ट लॉर्ड कृष्ण से नॉट योर हार्ट नॉट योर हार्ट एवरी गॉड इज हार्ट एंड ऑल द पीपल चाइना रशिया इंडिया यूरोप एवरीबॉडी इज हार्ट इज इज सिटिंग so if he is seated in your heart so what is your body then it's a temple aap isko hum classroom kehte hain right if i bring a bhagwan shri krishna ki murti yahan la ke rakh do uski sthapna kar de to we will not call this now any more classroom will say mandir because lord krishna मूर्ति इज देयर दिस इज द डिवाइन वॉरंटी कमिंग ऑफ अशुल भगवदगीता दैट आई एम सीटिंग इन योर थॉट सो योर बॉडी इज अ टेम्पल होल्ड दिस थॉट इट इज नॉट ए गप बाजी इट इज नॉट ए गप बाजी इट इज बेस्ड अपॉन दिस्ड अपॉन मेनी मेनी थाउजेंड ईयर्स ऑफ सेजिस सो इफ योर बॉडी इज अ टेम्पल don't misuse it don't abuse it which means eat right bring the quality if you are eating right and less in quantity you are healthy why we should be waiting for the my blood report from a doctor that you have a sugar because they are eating laddu and jalebi and all that stuff that is called misused and abuse of your body somebody has to pay the price so whose responsibility is that whose body is this my whose responsibility i with my own hand i open my mouth and put something nobody compels anybody to eat anything we select we go to the supermarket and we select the food we go to wedding parties everything is displayed it is you who are picking so if you are qualitative if you understand the lord krishna is there i am meeting for him jaise mandir mein aap meat nahi khate khate aise bhi aap you will abstain from those toxic foods we are what we eat shakespeare said that bhagavad gita said that thousands years so you are what you eat so if you want to be qualitative healthy eat qualitative food and stay healthy so do's and don'ts apply but it is responsibility spirituality brings you the discipline discipline how much disciplined you are will indicate how much spiritual you are ye nahi ki ye bhi kha liya wo bhi kha liya ye bhi chal gaye wahan bhi chal gaye it will be disciplined life when you are disciplined you levitate you defy the gravitational force you levitate in your thinking your thinking is different so if your body is a temple so eat those things which are quality maintain the dignity and respect of your body people who don't respect their body then don't respect any body else charity begins at home so it is all free you don't have to pay anybody anything bhagavad gita gives you the strength that it is doable do it it is now or never bhagavad gita believes in reincarnation when we come back the message is still the same 
So why don't I get it right now? So that is what Srimad Bhagavad Gita is. And I brought to your attention many concepts. This was the karma. I initiated this discussion. Karma is selflessness, become selfless. That will be qualitative karma. When you do selfish acts under the concept of karma, that me first, everybody else is later on. Those are bad karma. So then you are creating in the books of your life credits and debits. Good karma is a credit, bad karma is a debit. And when you will make the trial balance of your life, how many people who understand accounting? But I am giving So when you will reconcile, it will not be reconciled, debit will be more. And then according, this is the warranty of Bhagavad Gita, depending upon the balance sheet of our life, when we leave this planet and ready to be reincarnated, that balance sheet goes with you. That is called a very refined, invisible program written on the chip of your soul. That goes with you. And when you are reincarnated, you are reborn, that chip is there. So everybody has a chip. So if I have five sons, they came through me, they have different chips. When they are young, they are lovely. When they grow up, everybody has their own personality. Same parents, same food, same bed, same kitchen, same atmosphere, same resources, all are different. Because the chip is working. And it takes time for the chip to work by it's looking for the compatibility. Aap kitra bhi acha app leo. Agar wo uski compatibility nahi hai, to wo work nahi karega. That is called the magic of reincarnation. But it is an in our hand. That is why Bhagavad Gita says that you are, you are, we all are the master of our destiny. You can make it, you can mar it. It is your hands with this awareness that I should do the right karma. Persistently, with perseverance, with full confidence. Then, at that point in time, you are very qualitative. That is what happens. So, the concept of the law of karma, it is inevitable. But your choice is to do the right karma or do the bad karma. Good karma, bad karma. When you are in a mode of mind of goodness, then you are doing the right karma, good karma, because at that point in time you are selfless. You are positive. Your energy is at the optimum level. You are fearless. But when we initiate bad karma, bad karma means selfish acts. Me first. That will make you negative, unproductive, unqualified, and you may produce a lot of quantity. It will not be a quality because you are negative. So that is the concept of the law of karma. Second concept is, second school of thought is bhakti yoga, the yoga of devotion. Aap bhakti kisko kehte hai? I am just asking. Anybody. What is bhakti? You have heard this. So what is bhakti? Anybody. Devotion. Just share the thought. Devotion. Just explain a little bit more. What is devotion? 
किसको कहते हैं क्या मैं करूं वॉट टू मे डू दैट पीपल से सो एंड सो इज डूइंग गुड doing anything full heartedly so whatever you do you have to yeah so you gave little hint that is not the definition of bhakti bhakti is you want intellectually united with the invisible forces this ko hum god kehte hain you are connected so the condition precedent in the concept of devotion you got to be connected connected all the time yani ki mandir mein aarti kar li and then 23 hours i am free no bring that thought when you were moving the thali in front of the almighty and move that thali of your mind when you are commuting when you are working when you are talking to your wife that thali should be moving which means your thought should be that your thought should be that and it will not happen log kehte hain bhakti badi aasan hai no it is not it's not a freedom you have to work for that so bhakti who will do the bhakti the next person somebody has to do it jo bhakti karta hai usko kya kehte hain right so simple aur bhakti kisko kehte hain who is bhakt who is not vibhakt jo juda hua hai bhakt means permanently unite उसको भक्त कहते हैं वो रोटी भी खाता है तो उसके लिए करता है तो ऑफिस भी जाता है नाउ वी गो टू ऑफिस नाइन वी ऑल गो टू ऑफिस आई एम रिटायर्ड सो एवरी प्रिवलेज बट वी ऑल गो टू ऑफिस सो वेन यू गो टू ऑफिस वी आर गोइंग टू ऑफिस फॉर अर्निंग मनी जो मुझे पे मिलेगी एंड देन देर इज बॉस Or your supervisor or manager who is supervising you, right? So you work for him because he has to evaluate you. Sooner or later, a monthly evaluation will come. And that will depend what you did in that period of time. So, जो भक्त है, वो इस प्रोसेस में नहीं होता. He works for Lord Krishna. because he profoundly believe lord krishna is here so he is the eye witness so if my supervisor is not there you are still being witnessed by the almighty like who would i don't believe i believe that man who is called manager or supervisor but i don't believe that this person lord krishna is supervising him also so if your thinking is this you have to practice it it takes many years of discipline to practice this that lord krishna is here he is watching me all the time then i will be qualified my quality will improve my eating habits will improve my thinking will improve one time i was sharing for at some different location i gave a white paper to the audience and i asked them humbly write down 10 10 thoughts and prioritize them 1 2 3 1 2 10 <laughs> most of the time what you think we all think right so if i give you the paper now and i ask you humbly that pen down 10 thoughts and prioritize them 1 to 10 and the question is what are your predominant thought what do you think most of the time in your waking state you will be surprised 
सब कुछ कुछ और लिखेंगे और ये जो हम क्लास ले रहे हैं स्पिरिचुअलिटी की ये कोई भी लिखेगा ही उसमें मॉडगेज होगी जॉब होगी वाइफ होगी बच्चे होंगे मकान होगा कार होगी नेबर हो होगा उसने ये कह दिया उसने ये कह दिया दिस इज वॉट वी थिंक मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम एंड इज इट बी वे टू लिव नो नो लाइक एनी थिंग है आप मोड़के नहीं भूलते आपको याद है चाहे आपने बैंक के थ्रू ली हो चाहे आपने डायरेक्ट दे ली हो नो बड़ी आपको आपकी छुट्टियों का सब याद है आपको ये भी याद है कि वैल्यूशन कब आनी है सो वी हैव प्रायोरिटाइज अवर थिंक भगवत गीता ब्रिंग ए वेरी रेवोल्यूशनरी आइडिया इन योर माइंड That prioritize your thinking differently. Make a space of this also. What we are talking about. Make a space. Our mind is a sponge. So if you put a garbage and it is saturated, there is no space for this. What we are talking. I am talking now. It looks nice. But after ten minutes, when you will leave. I can guarantee. I don't want to say that because the mind is saturated. There is no space. You have to make an honest space, squeeze it, make a space. And this is also a priority, top priority. This will go with you. This is divine warranty coming out of Bhagavad Gita. Spiritual knowledge. at the end of the journey stays with you i am not saying that bhagwan shri krishna kare who is the creator of this phenomenal creation seer ki guarantee warranty to hum maan lete hain jab fridge lete hain bhagwan shri krishna ki kyon nahi maante this knowledge will stay with you so we will continue on the discussion of shrimad bhagavad gita in our next session thank you very much try to digest one or two